This episode of Comics for Fun and Profit is brought to you by Threadless. More importantly, the Comics Fun Profit shop on Threadless at comicsfunprofit.threadless.com where you can find, oh, about half a dozen different designs, plenty of Comics for Fun and Profit themed merch. If you just want a t-shirt, you're good. And if you want sweatshirts or other swaggy items, man, you can get anything. Phone cases, shower curtains. It runs the gamut. Skateboards, I think. <laughs> so check that out. Uh, we've already sold several. We're excited about the fact that the folks that want to support us in this way are able to and uh, wear our merch out into in the real world. That's pretty exciting stuff. So uh, yeah, get your comics for fun and profit branded items at comicsfunprofit.threadless.com. Aloha, it's Jason from Hawaii. Welcome to a special edition of the Comics for Fun and Profit podcast. In this episode, I will be interviewing comic book creator Adrian Kolarik. Now, Adrian is here to promote his latest work, Chakovi. Adrian wrote and drew this five-part limited series from Scout Comics. The first issue comes out on July 26th. Adrian, welcome to the Comics for Fun and Profit podcast. How are you doing today? I am doing very okay. Thank you for having me. I'm 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 very excited that you answered my call, and here we are. No, but thank you very much. Now, for listeners, um, I'm just gonna go over some of um, Adrian's um, um, uh, past works that he's done, or you know, and and Adrian, like I said, please correct me at any time. Yeah. Now, I got some of this information from two websites, thinkitem.com. And yeah. escapeintolife.com. Mm -hmm. Adrian is a Canadian art artist from Edmonton. He started as an interior designer in the mid 90s and later moved to the industrial design. He collaborated with artists who used his furniture design as a canvas for their own work. He had, as far as I know, um, and, and Adrian, please correct me on this, an art exhibit in 2007 of your furniture designs was that it I, I saw a picture yeah yeah yes yeah okay. so uh um i don't know if you, do you want me to just jump in here yes please yes, okay please so okay it. uh yeah so i originally started uh uh i took uh interior design technology here in edmonton out of high school uh because i i, I wanted to go into the arts you know i was always self-taught and all that i wanted to go into the arts but at the same time i wanted to be able to make a living and mm -hmm. eat. Yeah. And so, uh, and there was really nothing overly creative in Edmonton at the time in terms of post-secondary. So we kind of like, uh, I just kind of, you know, checked out the local technical uh, institute, went to interior design technology. Mm -hmm. To me, it was the closest thing to being a creative, whatever. Then for a couple of years, kind of got into the field afterwards and all that. And then um, I ended up hooking up with a group of industrial designers from the University of Alberta. And so they had a group called IDEA, Industrial Designers of Edmonton Association. So I just befriended one of them. He brought me to the group. And then we then curated uh, a biannual contemporary furniture show mm -hmm, uh, yes. called called Frost and Thaw. And so Frost was in the winter. Thaw was in the, uh, in the summer. And so basically the furniture we designed were like these prototypes and they were like uncomfortable but mm -hmm. nice looking furniture right they're almost art pieces in that mm -hmm. and so uh we we did it for a few years and it got to the point where we started bringing in like we had like people from croatia people from brazil mm -hmm. uh they were submitting their pieces anyway so uh it just kind of turned into this thing and then uh i then got into my interest turned towards um uh designer toys mm -hmm. uh like vinyl toys so you know so basically it's like you know uh, um um like current uh, modern artists at the time who had like character driven pieces uh they would uh hook up with uh, people like kid robot and mm -hmm. uh they would produce uh vinyl toys uh mm -hmm. based on on their character and so i just found i just really um I don't know why it just all of a sudden it just kind of clicked and it just like it brought me back to wanting to do like a graphic uh, pieces, get back into art. Mm -hmm. And so and because I got tired of moving around furniture, to be honest. Right. Like it's mm -hmm. just, it got too heavy. You know, the shows were just ridiculous. Right. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, so I made a couple of pieces that allowed for artists to customize. And then that was basically my uh, my gateway, um, you know, into into that uh, into that area. And then and then from there, it just kind of like. It just kind of snowballed from there. I just kind of got into, um, 
you know, I got a bootleg copy of Photoshop and then I started teaching myself, you know, how to use that. And I was doing really bad digital collages and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it was just a natural progression at the time. So cool. I have to say that is so cool. Um, I'm being honest because I can't remember which website I was looking through. I think it might've been, I think it might've been escape into life.com because some of the yeah. furnitures you were talking, you you designed and stuff was one of them was called the sugar the sugar lounger design kind of like a yep rocker yep. on the like not a yeah it, a rocker, yeah it was big not... big clunky rocker that had like this barrel that uh allowed you to um adjust it i guess uh -huh. um it, yeah really minimal uh yeah so that was that was again too, that was like that was one of my biggest pieces and just hauling that thing around was just yes. a complete mm -hmm pain in the ass right um but it's a um you know it just helped me um you know deal with color you know learn about mm -hmm. composition yeah and um yeah like i said it was just like every everything like from interior design to the furniture design all that it just it, it just felt like it was steps mm -hmm. working towards the comic books right and i always knew i would get into comics mm -hmm. um but i wasn't i wasn't ready yet yeah. and then um you know by the time you know well here we are now so obviously i'm ready but uh yeah and also um i and according to one of the websites i and i believe it was thinkitem.com mm -hmm. yeah um you did a book the viper sisters and the sinister reasoning of abstracta yes so this is an absolutely ridiculous series that i had done so this is kind of when i was like really getting to the groove of the digital collage mm -hmm. uh whatever and it's like so i did a series called the viper sisters and basically all it was is just like uh i would just just kind of grab fo old photographs of like a, of a woman mirror her and just put a couple tiger heads on there yes. and then i basically put them on top of like i would grab like like classical paintings like like turner landscapes and all that and i would just kind of create this bizarre mm -hmm. composition Mm -hmm. and uh anyway and then i've just like you know uh i don't know maybe i was kind of into the smiths at the time or whatever but i just really like long-winded song titles okay. and i just wanted just ridiculous a ridiculous title to go with a ridiculous piece mm -hmm. and um it's funny it just ended up being it ended up being really popular with people because i would um because at the same time i learned how to do gel transfers so i would print off the pieces and i would make these plywood canvases and basically i would just a gel transfer is like you kind of take an acrylic gel Mm -hmm. You uh, you smother on top of the plywood. You smother on top of the uh, uh, the, the the printed piece. Mm -hmm. Put it face to face. Rub it. Peel off the paper, and it's basically uh, uh, ingrained into the wood, right? Uh, telegraphed mm -hmm. onto the wood, and it just almost looks like you know something you, you find on on the side of a road. And um, anyway, so then at the end, at my tail end of my interest doing this, I I went on, I opened up a blurb account and I made a book. Uh huh. Um, and I think I sold one coffee. <laughs> so, so that was right out of the blocks. And then that was it. I was like, sayonara. I moved on to the yeah. next thing. So, and that's the thing too. It's like, um, like if you go through my website, thinkkind.com, you'll, I have the, the years on there. You kind of notice that everything kind of moves in a two year interval yes. from one project to another, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, a conscious decision. It was uh -huh. just a natural thing. So yeah. usually I found after two years, I just be like, okay, I'm interested in this now, right? Mm -hmm. Except for the comics. The comics, I think that's that's kind of been sticking around. I think I'm kind of where I want to be right now. Yes. Um, all right, Adrian. I, since I've gone over, you know, um, some of your background, I'm just gonna. I'm just asking. Do you want to add anything that you want your to, you want the listeners to check out or any of your other works or anything? <sighs> Well, yeah, if you go to thinkguide.com, I mean, it's like I said, it's, um, you know, it, you'll, you'll see it from like where I started in 2003 mm -hmm. with furniture design leading up to, I, I, you know, it's funny, I haven't really updated my site to mimic, the, to, to show what I'm doing with the comics. So it's kind of mm -hmm. funny, it almost sort of like stops at like, you know, I think 2020 and mm -hmm. then it's like, you know, it's like I disappeared. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it, it's, uh, if you go through all the pieces, the all the series, you, you will see like, uh, you know, a progression in, in storytelling. Mm -hmm. and a progression in um uh, defining what colors i seem to kind of like stick with mm -hmm. and basically a style right but it's a style that's kind of like over like a bunch of different mediums and that mm -hmm. so um so, yeah, so i hope people kind of check it out and, and then kind of get a bit of a flavor for you know what uh what the books may may deliver thank you very much and then adrian before we start getting to the meat and potatoes of the interview yeah i want to thank you very much for contacting us 
And thank you for the advanced copies. I mean, listeners, you know, he gave us an advanced reading copies of all five issues of Tracovi. We're going to get to that shortly. I want to give a shout out to, um, I want to give a shout out to um, um, a YouTube podcast that Adrian was on um, just recently. And that was dated on May 26th, 2023. He appeared on the YouTube podcast, The House of Nerd Show. Now, if you guys get a chance, please check out that awesome interview. And also, too, um, I got some background, in, uh, more background information about Adrian and his comic book, uh, Tracovi, from an article um, from a website, y.edmonton.com. And they have a section on there that um, focuses on writers in the Edmonton area. It's called the Writer's Block. Now, um, listeners, I'm going to say, please do not be confused with the Writer's Block, the YouTube podcast hosted by Ryan Grant and David Avalone. Um, so, you know, again, if you guys get a chance, please check out the um, the website, whyedmonton.ca, um, um, and look for um, Adrian, um, look for Adrian's name. And he basically talks about, he gives a little bit background of the comic and there's a cool picture. I won't, we, let's not talk about it until we talk about, you see, you see my question. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So Adrian, let's, I'm just going to start off with a brief origin story. If you okay. just give us a brief origin story. So, you know, what were some of your favorite series um, that you read while growing up? Well, uh, it's, it's funny. I still actually still have, and I keep it up here on my wall. Um, so uh, G.I. Joe 13 was always like one of my favorite uh Mm -hmm. favorite books of all time right yes. uh because it's when like snake eyes was missing and and at the end uh there's a scene where um they kind of go into this lagoon and there's like a knocking sound knocking sound there's yes. like this like bunker and you see oh my god it must be snake eyes so i was a big gi joe fan like i'm a kid from the 80s right yes. and then um and then of course i was a big fan of uh uh of the original uh teenage mutant ninja turtles mm -hmm. um and then and then the tick was was massive for me uh i was a big tick fan i loved how it was drawn mm -hmm. i loved everything about it i love the indie vibe about it mm -hmm. and then of course then i got i and then daredevil uh if i had to go with with, with a big two uh mm -hmm. I, I, um i was a big fan of the annie nocente and uh john Romita jr oh, series yes. right yeah. that was like that's my pinnacle and i i, I thought I think Zdarsky's did, did really well uh, mm -hmm. recently as well. And then, uh, then of course, I mean, I got caught up in the whole early 90s thing, mm -hmm. uh, I think, with everybody. So when, when Todd McFarlane showed up uh, on Amazing Spider-Man, it felt like a moon landing mm -hmm. for a lot of us. Like, you know, we're, we're, you know, all of a sudden, we all want to draw like Todd. And then all of a sudden, Jim Lee came on, and then, and then Rob Leefield mm -hmm. and uh, Wills Portacio. It was just it was just like an unbelievable time. And um but I find now I look back now, it, it seems a little dated to me, some of this stuff. And then uh mm -hmm. so I went hard in the nineties and I just disappeared after that at the, at the comic book scene. I think a lot of guys burnt out as well, right? Mm -hmm. You know, everyone had their bazillion copies of, you know, Wildcats and you oh, know, yeah. all that, right? Yeah. So <laughs> so so I just completely got out of it. And mm -hmm. then um and then I got back into it like, I don't know, but maybe about five years ago. Uh as soon as I saw a poster of um um the, the new x-men series uh with jonathan hickman oh yes uh, just like the, 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 x and... the yeah the the yeah. redesign of, of professor xavier right with that big helmet the big x i thought this yeah. is fantastic design so it was that and then of course then uh the cover for daredevil number one the zadarsky um nice. uh mm -hmm. run and then from there i just i jumped back into it and then it just kind of opened up for me but it's mostly indie titles that i seem to be uh you know like i'm a big fan of something's killing the children um zach thompson's lonely receiver i love to death and then and then funny enough scout um scout had oh they had grit i loved mm -hmm. and then uh it eats what feeds it uh was another favorite and then mullet cop mm -hmm. um yes yeah yeah so i'm just like you know honestly i'm all over the map like you oh, know yeah. and it's funny because like one thing too is like i try to tell people <laughs> i'm not a comic book guy and, mm -hmm. and I, I collect them I appreciate them. I'll talk about whatever. I make mm -hmm. comics, but I'm not a comic book guy. I will not be able to tell you what happened in such and such issue, who yeah. penciled it, who whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm terrible with that. You know, it's like I'll love a book, 
I'll forget the name of the book. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm those guys where it's like, what's your favorite book? I'm like, uh, 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 you know, and then I have to have someone kind of look it up. So, um, so I do have limitations, um, <laughs> you know, so if I ever see anybody, you know, in a future con, mm -hmm. uh, or expo, I'm going to apologize ahead of time because mm -hmm. do not try to get in a conversation about some X-Men folklore. Cause it's just gonna, it's gonna be deaf ears. <laughs> um, you mentioned that, you know, um, you, you got back into comics five years ago, you, you know, um, you, you were um, an interior designer, industrial designer. Um, what made you decide to make your own comic? Yeah, sorry, I knew that's I was, a tough question. Yeah, no. Yeah. You know what? Listen, I always knew I was going to do one. And it's funny. I, I, I did make one comic before it was in grade nine. It was for an English assignment. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, so I actually, I drew and, and whatever I wrote and colored this comic, right. I think, I don't know how old was I, I would have been 12. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So, um, but I always knew I was going to do it, but I just never felt confident enough in, 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 in my drawing mm -hmm. and my storytelling. I didn't think I was a writer mm -hmm. yet. And anyway, so, um, what had happened was, so as as my stuff was progressing from mm -hmm. digital to blah, 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 then I started like just drawing again, just physically drawing, grabbing a pencil. I did like little hand sketches of like uh, this kind of like long haired hippie mm -hmm. who traveled around in Volkswagens, right? So mm -hmm. I drew Volkswagens and long haired bearded hippies for mm -hmm. a long time. And that basically helped me kind of train again how to draw. So if you look at the series, it's called Here. And basically it's here. It's like, you know, it's just kind of, it was this whole like kind of, I, I used to drive like this old vintage Volkswagen Beetle, 72 Beetle. Mm -hmm. and we used to go camping and all that. I just like this feeling of just driving out to the middle of nowhere and just being here, just kind of like mm -hmm. almost like a restart. Anyway, so so I was training myself to draw again. So if you look at the first few sketches, all my hands are, are mitts. Um, <laughs> there's no there's no fingers. Uh -huh. And then the, there's there's no faces. There's no eyes, right? It's just basically a blank face with a big beard, right? Uh -huh. uh, but as it progresses, you'll see fingers showing up and yeah. whatever showing up. So things start showing up. Yeah. Anyway, so it progressed, progressed, progressed. Then I started um, I started doing markets uh, mm -hmm. in town here, like kind of like, you know, uh, uh, just kind of modern markets. Anyway, so then I started drawing uh, almost fan arts, right? So I would, but I would draw like, you know, known heroes in particular situations. So like, I, I drew Doctor Doom making a sandwich, you know. So <laughs> yeah. that like that, that kind of stuff, right? You know, I I I drew Nightcrawler eating a donair, right? It was just like silly stuff, right? And um, and anyway, so then that kind of got me back into my love of drawing mm -hmm. superheroes. So it's an actual progression. And then I end up drawing this one character called uh, Peter Petrovich, who's basically like a Slavic version of Peter Parker, right? Mm -hmm. Just this kind of heavy Slavic guy, big mustache, and he wears this, what, like a toque. And um, so anyway, so I had him in, in the classic Spider-Man pose where he's swinging and he's holding a thug underneath his arm. Yes. And so the thug that I drew was, well, it was Dracovi. And um, I based him off a of Hydra agents, right? The, the, the vintage oh, Hydra, yes. right? And I love, I love, the, the the old Hydra uniforms are one of my favorites. Yeah. I just love it to death. And so I wanted my own version of a Hydra, whatever. Yes. And then um anyway, so then I was actually gonna originally write a story on Peter Petrovich. Mm -hmm. Problem is there is uh, there is a a little mini series out called Italian Spider Man out of Australia. And oh. uh, Italian Spider it's live action. It's a comedy it's a comedy troupe. It's brilliant. Uh, Italian Spider-Man looks way too close to Peter Petrovich. I'm like, ah, shit, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I'm like, well, I'm gonna focus on the on the goon, and I'll just yeah. like, I'll just start doing more whatever. So I did, I did more illustrations with Trakovi before I mm -hmm. actually gave him a name, and then eventually I, uh, I just kind of started thinking I need to write a book. Uh huh. And then it just from there is just kind of notes, scribbles, ideas, and then steps, right? Oh, okay. I'm going to say this is the perfect segue into Tracovi. Mm -hmm. So for listeners, you know, what is Tracovi, the Slav with, with no remorse? What is the series about? Okay. So on the surface, when you first mm -hmm. start out, basically Tracovi is in, in short, he's a Slovenian thug doing light contract work in the Canadian city of Edmonton. Basically that's what it is. He's just a, Mm -hmm. You know, and then and then basically the series kicks off with uh, with a botched heist and unfortunate event. He makes this catastrophic decision 
of like i say he blows up a, a school bus full of children mm -hmm. on page page you know four mm -hmm. and then it, and then from there basically um his world unravels the people around him mm -hmm. their worlds unravel it just becomes it just spirals into mm -hmm. uh tragedy and um yeah it just it just go it just goes where it's, well i can't really say where it goes because oh, we yes. were talking earlier about spoilers right but it, yes. it goes it, it goes to a place that you did not expect yes um and that's that's really the the, the gist of it it's so you know it's funny because like i i had to write like log lines and you know that for scout and all that i'm like oh fuck, how do i <laughs> how do i how do i do this right and it was just it was a real challenge right you know like to explain this without without spoiling it so i just kind of stick with the you know the you know he blows up a school bus full mm -hmm. of children which yeah. actually is pretty impactful right that actually does get people yeah, going no, oh it does, yes because you know, that's mm -hmm. really an awful thing to do right obviously so um so that at least gets that them hooked in they read the first issue mm -hmm. and then and then i you know usually the very last page in issue one kind of hooks you yes and then you know which i'm talking and then you just jump yes. into two and then mm -hmm. so forth and so forth yeah now don't spoil anything mm -hmm. um there's Trakovi's name is there a certain translation to his name so yeah okay so mm -hmm. so I, I so i grew up uh, in, a, in a slovenian household Okay. Uh, originally Yugoslavian, but before you know, then w when the, the war in Yugoslavia, then we we became Slovenian, right? Anyway, so uh, so I wanted a Slovenian name, and mm -hmm. then so I just basically just kind of just started googling Google Translate, looking for mm -hmm. whatever, and then I came across you know, the name Trakovi, and it uh, it translates to like tape or ribbon. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for 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 apparel. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, when you're doing trim and all that. And I thought, well, this is perfect. Right. So because I can incorporate that, you know, because that's actually incorporated into his his uniform. He's got the stripes. He's got the ribbons on his whatever. So I'm like, perfect. I was a little reluctant at first because it um, you know, we talked about earlier. Uh, before we came on uh kind of a bit of a russian vibe to it right mm -hmm. uh you know to like over you kind of like you know say like a vampire almost right um but so i was kind of leery about that because i i'm just trying to bypass this you know surface kind of russian stereotypical mm -hmm. idea that someone might have this has nothing to do with it yeah. anyway so uh i like the name it was easy people can pronounce it right away mm -hmm. and uh it's just kind of funny just having you know every you know a regular person say a slovenian word you know yes. um so you know what i mean so so there you go so everyone knows a slovenian word now yeah. mm -hmm. all right now um I'm going to I'm going to tweak this question just a little bit like mm -hmm. Trakovi is he sort of loosely based on somebody yes uh my grandfather okay yeah my grandfather yeah so yeah so my grandfather a slovenian immigrant uh actually i grew up with my my, my grandparents both slovenian immigrants immigrants they came over in the 50s mm -hmm. and uh yeah just a larger than life man you know the, the he got the accent you mm -hmm. know he was just um <laughs> one of those guys just kind of walked around shirtless in the summertime with a fantastic tan and just yeah. like the, a dad a dad bod that's just <laughs> you know to die for and uh yeah and so he you know, as i was writing it you know i i had his dialogue in, yes. in, in my in my head i mean mm -hmm. obviously i exaggerated some of it you know like you know like he, you know in the book he drops a c-bomb quite a bit yes. uh, so, <laughs> uh so my grandfather never really yeah, yeah, he obviously dropped that too. He swore yeah. a lot uh in that. So I was kind of trying to bring that into uh mm -hmm. uh into the book. But yeah, so he's he's the primary um, you know, mm -hmm. inspiration. Yeah. And then I know in the um the writer's block article, you said basically that's you know, the um the your grandfather swearing and Jacoby swearing, that's where it just basically ends. That that's the 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 the, the similarity yeah. of the characters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He wasn't he was by no means a violent man. Yeah. You know, he's a very gentle man. He's a very he was just a very nice guy. Mm -hmm. Uh loved his loved his family and that. So there was nothing bad about him. But I just found he was just looking back, he was just very comedic. You know, mm -hmm. and, and and I grew up I grew up in an environment where, you know, uh we were surrounded by other you know, like we had like uh, Italians, Croatians, yeah. Serbians, Polish, you know, it was just this, this melting pot around us. And then maybe two in the afternoon and then, you know, our Serbian neighbor would kind of show up and all of a sudden it's like three in the morning and they're absolutely hammered. There's like a, a sea of wine bottles and uh -huh. people are, they're singing and mm -hmm. it's just like this, 
you know, so it was always kind of part of that, um, you know, just part of that lifestyle. And I kind of mm-hmm. want to draw from that yes. and, and mm-hmm. hopefully kind of, you know, you know, have it come through uh, in, in a few panels. I'm going to hold my thought to, uh, because I want to ask more, I want to ask you more questions because, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so anyway, um, and then um, I'm just going to ask this one question. It's like, you know, what inspired you to write this story? Because again, I read all five issues. <laughs> yeah. Like, where did this story come from? Yeah. You know, so I, I didn't want to write a superhero book. Yes. Right. And and again, too, I think, I think, again, uh, I said, I'm not a comic book guy. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, I was lucky enough not to have preconceptions about how a comic book should be. Yes. You know what I mean? So I, I felt like I was kind of coming in as a complete outsider mm-hmm. with, with, you know, I was just making up in my head how it should look. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. So this story, gosh, I, I had, I just kind of, I, God, well, I had my settings, right? Mm-hmm. I knew I wanted a story in Edmonton, right? Mm-hmm. That was really important because I wanted a bit of realness mm-hmm. to it. And then I just kind of just sort of just kind of came up with certain scenarios. And it's funny, mm-hmm. I, I would watch certain TV shows and movies okay. and kind of ideas coming yeah. in my head. So it, the first two issues was like a, a quilt of ideas and mm-hmm. I was just trying to marry it, right? Yes. As best as I could, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I think, issue three is really where the storytelling i think i think that's when i finally that's when i kind of hit the storytelling that i want to tell yeah so one and two you know it's it's just you know it's my first book right so one mm-hmm. and two is a first time writer you know it's just like just trying to find my legs mm-hmm. and um yeah so it was um like the story so where the story went like i had an idea where the story was going to go but mm-hmm. when i talked to my editor at scout he had asked me where three four and five is going mm-hmm. i told him and he's like no you're not going to go there. He mm-hmm. goes, there's a, there's a Chekhov's gun in issue one mm-hmm. uh, where Tchaikovsky says he refers to somebody who's mm-hmm. not in the book, but somebody yeah. off, off camera. He goes, you, you pinpoint that person. And then you, you build a story off of that. And then, and then it's just like, it's like a switch. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yes. And I, right away I thought this is a family story. Yes. This is a, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, you know, I was kind of reading what, what other screen, like screenwriters do. And like, you know, people like Tarantino, like what they, Mm -hmm. where they come from stories and all that. I thought, well, you know, they have their things, right? I thought, what could be my thing? I'm like, well, family, family's my, I have enough stories. Yes. You know, we, we we had a colorful past, right. You know, with families now, European families can be very, Mm -hmm. you know, and um, so I just drew from that. I'm like, screw it let's just let's just dive into like you know some of the ugly stuff and let's just you know expand on it and Mm -hmm. be honest right and here we are um you mentioned one thing about you wanted the setting to be in edmonton Mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna tweak this question a little bit more is because you put in um now correct me if i'm wrong at least a couple of landmarks from Edmonton, right? Like yeah, Victoria yeah. There's a few. There's Fancy. there's three three spots in there. Yeah. Okay. Victoria yeah. Fancy Sausage and Delicatessen. Yeah. Why did you put that in there? What's the significance? I okay. So that that place has been around since I was a kid, mm-hmm. and so we used to go there. My grandfather would, you know, he was a hunter, so he'd bring his game there. They would process the game, and so we we would just, you know, we would go there like it felt like every weekend, right? And um, it was funny, you know, after he passed, I moved and kind of back and forth. I, I hadn't been there in years. And then mm-hmm. uh, one day I just kind of went back there and mm-hmm. it was just uh, the smells, the heavy smokiness mm-hmm. of the meat. And, and you know, it's just like it did. The place hasn't changed in like yes. decades. And it just kind of like, yeah, it's just I knew this was going to be part of it right it was going to be you know part of the story and it has it has a great signage too i love like their checker pattern and all that so mm-hmm. it was it was kind of a it was a no-brainer um mm-hmm. uh, you know off the cuff question because we already talked about it before yeah. we started um i have to keep going back to that writer's block article there's a yeah. cool picture of you standing in front of the delicatessen with your comic yeah. Want to tell the funny story of what happened? About- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so Sandra Speronis, uh, so she used to write for the Empton Journal. She was like a music uh, journalist, she did reviews and all that. Actually, I, I, 
all through the 90s, I, I used to love her articles. Anyway, so she ends up working for the city of Edmonton, writer's block, focusing on Edmonton writers. Anyway, so so she contacts me, we set up this interview. She's like, let's do it in front of mm-hmm. the Victoria Vance Sausage House. Yes. I'm like, perfect, right? Mm-hmm. And so we're out front of this place, and it's on it's on 118th Avenue here in Edmonton. And, it, and the area is like, eh, it's a little sketchy. You know, it has its ups and downs, right? But what area doesn't? Anyway, so I'm out front, and they're they're recording me, and I'm reading Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and they have me reading in a Slovenian accent, right? So this is just <laughs> ridiculous, right? Uh, and then a, a street person walks by and she politely asks, you know, what are you doing here, right? And I said, I said, well, yeah, we're we're filming a, uh, you know, uh, like a pita, like an anti-meat uh, ad, right? You know, because we're in front of the butcher shop. She's mm-hmm. like, ah. So she walks away. <laughs> we continue. She comes back, berates me tells me how I'm ruining a small business and these are good people. How dare you? Blah, blah, blah. I just like said, I'm so sorry, ma'am. I'm so sorry. This, that was just a joke. This is for my comic book. I showed her the book. I showed her the, the, you know, Victoria yeah. Nancy and she's like, okay, all right. Just off she goes. And um, yeah. So anyway, I kind of, yeah, it was just, it was kind of fitting. It was just so fitting you know to have that moment. And then, and of course the, the uh, Sandra and, and her videographer were just howling. They just, they just, you know, they just couldn't. I think they actually have it on tape. I should really ask them if I can, if I could find that. Um, yeah, so it was good. It was a nice moment. It was a nice memory, yeah. you know, in the in this process. Now you mentioned about um, Sandra writing for like the you know meet the music scene back in the nineties. Yeah. yeah. Because you have words from a song from Misfortune by Snuff. Yes, and a few. Oh, yeah, okay. S and a few. So okay. S and a few. Um, so uh, they were uh, 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 they were the punk band to come out of Edmonton. So they started in the '80s, and then uh, and then you know they went on for the you know I think up until a few years ago when the lead singer died, right? So they went through different iterations of of, of band members and that. So uh, I was a junior high when I was introduced to S and a few, and it just it was just like a lifelong affair with this band. Um, you know, it, and, um, you know, I bought the shirts, went to the, mm-hmm. went to the concerts, but, you know, just like, I just like, I, I just devoured this band. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because, you know, they're local, they're from Edmonton. Yes. Um, but the passion, the, 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 the fan base here is so passionate about this, this little punk band from Canada anyway. So, um, so I, uh, yeah, so I just, I, I contacted them. A funny story though. So that yes, scene. Yes. Uh, it, Misfortune by SNFU was not supposed to be the, it wasn't the first choice of song uh, in that page. It was mm-hmm. Rush. I was going to use the song by Rush, uh, mm-hmm. Close to the Heart, because I thought, well, you know, it's kind of funny with, you know, like a cigarette kind of landing into like a puddle of oil and blowing up a school bus full of children. I mean, Close mm-hmm. to the Heart might be kind of, you know, set the mood kind of thing. But then as I kind of went, I'm like, well, I can't really, because there's, a, there's a, a panel there where he's holding a cassette and it's yeah. scribbled on his mm-hmm. SFU. Originally, it was Rush. I had mm-hmm. Rush close to their heart on it, right? So I just I took that out. If I thought it's like, well, I'm gonna get in trouble. I, I'm not gonna have Rush's permission. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I know I could probably contact one of the S and band members because I got a mm-hmm. friend who's friends with them. Mm-hmm. They contacted them. They said no problem. Just make sure you credit us. That's it. So I'm yeah. like, great. So anyway, so I, I I posted about this, right? And I commented about oh Rush, blah blah blah. So this friend. This friend of mine, she contacts me. So she's dating this 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 one Canadian musician. She's like, he's friends with Alex Lifeson, the guitarist from Rush. I could have caught you. Rush is okay to have the lyrics. I was like, holy shit. So I was like that close to having permission for Rush, you know, like Canadian royalty, uh, you know, in the book. Um, so yeah, it's kind of one of those missed opportunities. But the S N F U was it that it felt more well because they're from Edmonton. They 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 relocated to Vancouver back when um uh, but it just felt more um uh truer to the story yes you know and it, and it was like you know and if you're from from edmonton if you're familiar with them it just kind of made it that much more your own right so um it just it worked out it worked out you know no regrets um yes. so and the off the cuff question because and correct yeah. me if i'm wrong but if i remember correctly in i can, and don't ask me which issue or anything but some of the characters were wearing the SNFU uh, shirts, right? T-shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So Pastor Jim, yeah, Pastor Jim, That's who right. runs the in, in issue one, he runs the, uh, he runs like the um, um, like a rehab uh thing for bad guys, right? Yes. Um, it's almost like a scene out of Wreck-It Ralph. Um, 
and uh so anyway so yeah i like thought you know it'd be funny like you know this 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 priest pastor whatever mm -hmm. wearing an snfu shirt right and it's like the iconic snfu shirt that every you know everybody here has mm -hmm. um so yeah i just like to throw little homages to uh -huh. you know just just people that i grew up with right like as a thank you uh-huh now um when we're talking about pastor jim mm -hmm. I, i'm going to jump ahead i'm going to go back um asking other questions but there's that one i had to laugh at that one scene mm -hmm. i think you know which one where um and i'm gonna i'm gonna ask the question where did you come up with jim the bad guy no more support group leader saying where he welcomes everybody saying aloha mm -hmm. group where did you come up with that <laughs> I, Mr. I, Hand, I, yeah, Mr. Hand from Fast Times Ridge Ridgemont High. So, uh, so uh, if you've seen Fast Times, right? So uh -huh. Mr. Hand comes in, he goes Aloha class, and the class is Aloha <laughs> back, and you know, and then that's that's exactly where it is. That's it's just basically it's a nod to Mr. Hand. Um, yeah, yeah, it was just kind of fitting. So, uh, Jim, by the way, Jim's actually based on. He's actually based off of uh, uh, when I first started the book, uh, I was at the Edmonton Expo, uh, which is basically our Comic Con. Yes. And I was across from because uh, I know one of your questions was, you know, a favorite co uh, a convention. Moment, yeah. whatever. So this is actually it. Uh, so so I, I, I was set up there. This is before I started the book. This is when I still had like my, my fan arts kind of uh -huh. stuff going on. Right. And so I'm setting up. I had a really nice, you know, booth at Artist Alley. I thought this is yeah. going to be a great weekend across from me this this gentleman shows up a little bit older than me and uh he's got all these boxes and it's all like ceramic mugs they're just mugs right <laughs> nothing fancy he handmade mugs with stamps of like you know uh like 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 game of thrones stuff mm -hmm. harry potter stuff what mm -hmm. you know just kind of whatever like i was like thinking this is just pandering to nobody kind of thing i was i was a little i don't know why anyway so he sets up and he was from Mini he was from Minneapolis. He drove up from, from Minnesota all the way up to up to Edmonton. And so we kind of talking all that. And um, you know, he's all set up. I'm thinking, bro, you're gonna have the worst weekend ever, mm -hmm. right? Like no one's gonna whatever. And the tables were turned. I had the worst weekend ever. This guy had lineups for these mugs. He sold, he he I think he almost sold out. He yeah. was making hand over fist money. And it's funny, it was like we were uh, i had nothing to do because nobody was coming by my table so i we were kind of walking around i met some other artists and we're kind of huddled around how's your weekend shitty how's your weekend awful everyone's yeah. awful i'm like go see my neighbor and they look around he's got this lineup right and it was just the most bizarre thing there was a moment where i'm sitting there and we're talking right he's a he's a very lovely man he actually was a pastor oh. uh and so he gave up that and, and oh, just... anyway so so anyway so so we're just kind of talking, right? And he kind of, and his thing was he walks in front of his table. He kind of stands in the aisle. And so this one guy walks by him and he's, he looks like somebody out of Sons of Anarchy. Just this big biker. He's got the leather outfit. He looked like he just murdered somebody in the bathroom. And so he walks by Jim and Jim's like, he's like, hey. <laughs> and so this biker stops, turns around, he goes, you look like you need a mug, right? You kind of, you know, like, whatever. And it's like, he fucking sold this like biker a mug, right? <laughs> just like just because, just because. And I'm like, oh my god, dude. I said, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write you into this book, right? And I and but because of like my jealousy, I I said, if, I'm like, but I'm gonna put you in just cut off jean shorts, right? Like Britney Spears shorts, right? Because like this is pissing me off, right? And so yeah, so anyway, so so yeah, you kind of zoom out. Jim's got like the short short yes. jeans, right? So anyway, yeah, real person, sweetest guy in the world um the, yeah yeah and he actually gave me a bunch of mugs too at the last <laughs> day he gave me like mugs for everybody in my family I'm like thanks yeah <laughs> that's that so cool um now i'm gonna go back i know you said that uh Tricovi basically is your first comic mm -hmm. i just want a little bit of history of like when did you start working on the series like was it a it was actually you know what i think officially was at that at that expo um so that was 21 mm -hmm. september 21 and like i said that weekend was so slow mm -hmm. that i'm just sitting i'm like oh fuck i'm just gonna start writing yes. right and i just start writing and then there was uh there was one uh illustrator uh kind of around the corner for me so i talked to him a bit i threw ideas at him mm -hmm. 
And then there was another, you know, a couple of indie guys were there and I was just, just bouncing ideas off them. Right. And I kind of sort of had my notes. Yeah. Uh, I had early, I drew like an early uh, uh, version of Wendy, who's like one of the characters in the mm -hmm. book who looks completely different now. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, so I just basically had this skeleton and then I came home. Mm -hmm. I just kind of sat down that weekend uh, and I just kind of laid out a couple of scenes, right? The, the rehab scene. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of just started, then it just, it just kind of snowballed from there. And it actually went very quickly, like very quickly. It came together. And then, uh, so I think, yeah, so that was about a year. I, I say quickly, it's a year. Um, so it took me a full year mm -hmm. to kind of get that together. And then, and then, uh, I thought, well, I'm going to do a Kickstarter because that's probably the only shot I got at mm -hmm. getting people yes. to read it. And mm -hmm. then, you know, but but I made sure that the book was completely done by the time I launched Kickstarter. Oh yes, yeah. Um, so which was nice because as it, it finished, people got the books like you know the next week kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. What was your reaction when you saw your name on a on on your very first comic? Weird. Yeah, time. a little surreal. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny, and I know it was self-published at first, mm -hmm. but. I didn't care. I think it's when I got it back from the printers. I think that's when it really hit me. I'm like, oh my God, it's a book, right? Well, two books. Actually, I did issue one and two. I wrote issue one and two at the exact same time. So it was okay. actually going to be like this one book, right? This kind mm -hmm. of big double mm -hmm. issue, whatever. Uh, but then I found a natural spot, split it and, mm -hmm. yes. and that. So so that it was just it was really cool to mm -hmm. see it. And then I I I I I hired uh Dave Thomas, who's like a local painter mm -hmm. um, yes. here in town to do the covers for for yes. one and two. And Dave's mm -hmm. like Dave's classically trained. He's an oil painter. He does nice. portraits. Yes. He's he's like Dave's from another planet. So and I I didn't meet him beforehand. I just followed him on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And so I just sent him an email. I'm like, hey, I'm so and so. Do you want to do a comic book cover? I did not expect him to even return my my mm -hmm. my yeah. email. And I was I was fine with that. And he got back to me like like right away he said yeah absolutely and then we met went over it blah 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 and he the first two covers the self-published ones they're actually hand-painted pieces um and and i have them um which is cool so i got these two oil paintings and I, I got it photographed and then that's what we used for the um uh for the main covers yes now i'm going to ask you how did you team up with scout comics okay so the the book came out the kickstart ended yeah i might have my years off i think that i think it was 2020 mm -hmm. sorry was the uh was the expo okay 2021 yeah 2021 october that's when the kickstarter finished mm -hmm. i got funded mm -hmm. more than funded and then um to be honest i had no interest in publishing or, mm -hmm. or approaching a publisher i thought i would just be an independent guy yeah. and I'd just put out books for for fun uh, and then I saw I saw like Mullicop, and then I saw oh, yes. a couple other titles that Scout had, and I thought, you know, with Mullicop, it's like, well, this guy's really good. But at the same time, he's almost along the the same kind of community as I am, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it kind of feels like you know we're sort of like you know somewhat, you know, along the same uh, 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 thought process, right? So I'm like, well, I don't know, why not? Let's give it a shot, right? And I just I I just got bored one day. And I just like uh, I just hit up a few publishers. I kind of went through submissions, whatever. Mm -hmm. so I, the book was done. I had the PDFs were done. Everything was ready to go. I'm like, well, why not, right? Why not? And so I sent it all in. And then I got to Scouts, and they had their submission, whatever uh, guideline. But I didn't really kind of follow their guideline. I just kind of mm -hmm. sent them the full PDFs of the books. Yeah. And just like in my my email body, I'm like, hey, this is blah blah blah. That's it. Nothing. They wanted like these this letter and all this and. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of sort of not half assed it. Well, I half assed it. And uh, so I sent it in in October, November, and I just forgot about it, to mm -hmm. be honest, right? Uh, I didn't hear back from any of the other publishers, which yeah. is fine. I'm like, I'm like, whatever. I'm, I'm an indie guy, right? Mm -hmm. We don't care. Uh, and then December, I'm like, well, I'm going to check in. And I just like, I emailed Scout back. I'm like, hey, yeah, just check, check it in. Yeah. And then so uh, uh, a few days later, Brendan Deneen, who's like, scout ceo or founder or whatever the, the head guy um mm -hmm. uh, gets back to me he's like um we're still discussing we'll get back to you soon i'm like oh shit it's not a no right and so it's funny i i text my wife i'm like this is what he said what does it mean right yeah. and so we're, we're we're trying to decipher what he was saying and then he gets back to me he goes red issue one loved it talk soon it was like that's what the emails were they're were quick four or five word emails yeah. like shit expand right 
And so it was basically that for a good four weeks, right? And then, you know, I talked to him before Christmas. He goes, great issue too. Loved it. Talk soon, right? It was just like this little frustrating piecemeal over four weeks. And then he's like, yeah, we're going to talk about it with the editorial. Like, okay, fine. So Christmas came, went, mm -hmm. New Year. He's like, uh, we're still discussing it. There's a bit of pushback uh, from some of the other people. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes, but we have something called, he said, we have something called an Obama card which is basically like, well, because it's not a Trump card. It was an Obama card just because of anyway. Uh, so what it is, is like uh, everyone in the editorial group has like uh, an Obama card. So if they if they feel strongly about a book, then mm -hmm. they play the card and they got that one card and yeah. it goes through. So anyway, so he put down the Obama card uh, and he just sends back an email. He goes, okay, let's do this. And that was his email. That was it. And I'm like, okay, how do I respond? And mm -hmm. it was just like, oh, I was just like dying. And so I eventually got it back and forth, back and forth, contract signed. Mm -hmm. They set me up with an editor, uh, with his uh, Andrea Molinari, who mm -hmm. uh, nice. he's like their head editor. He also does a series called The Shepherd okay. uh, with Scout, which is a beautiful series. Uh, I highly recommend it. Anyway, so then I met uh, Andrea. We did a little uh, Zoom meet. He kind of mm -hmm. went through the whole, and th this is the most surreal thing. It's just like him laying out the lay of the land, mm -hmm. you know, how it works out for issues, release dates, mm -hmm. royalties, variant covers. It's very business like. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my God, this is it, right? You know, it just kind of felt, it felt weird to be at this point because I mean, I just finished off a Kickstarter a few months ago. Anyway, so then um, I sent him my PDFs for issue one and two. He uh, made his edits. And mm -hmm. um, and then it just kind of went from there. Cool. That is. I I. But that must have been. Um. Sitting at the edge of your seat for those four weeks, like okay, yeah, it was it was one. Loved it was it, bloody but... little torture. It was torture. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. It was absolute torture. Yeah. Right. Because I just, I just didn't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, like I said, it was just, you know. And then when I talked to, uh, actually, Brendan was saying, um, that one of the uh people in the, in the selection, or whatever, was having issues with, uh, well, how do you redeem somebody that just blew up mm -hmm. a yeah. bus, a busload of children on like page four? how do you come back from that right because yeah. they only had issue one and two so they didn't yeah. know it was a past that point mm -hmm. and which i understand right yeah. you know um but yeah he just felt that it was there was something there like he 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 really fought for that book and uh yeah i i really yeah i i, I can't thank that guy enough um yeah this i'm gonna i'm gonna talk talk to you about my thoughts because like i told you before I love this book. This is this is an amazing book. Thank you. Like you That's said, so cool. Tracovi, Tr Tr like you said, Tracovi starts off, you know, he blows a school bus with kids and and mm -hmm. and listeners, I'm not downplaying this or anything, please. Because yeah. we've read comics where, you know, we've seen bad guys do worse things or, you know, or and yeah. we've seen it in in, in in independent comics, but but this one is a very strong story. There's a very strong story to this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say if you peel away, you know, Trokovi's, uh, you know, his super villain role and what he's done and so forth and mm -hmm. his supporting and you bring in his supporting characters. And we've, and we've talked about, I, I think we talked about this is that, like you said, it's family. Mm -hmm. Because in that support group, it's he's surrounded by people that he knows. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not like I'm Doctor Bong and you know I'm trying to kill Howard the Duck. <laughs> I, I, I'm the eel and, and, and no, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Because there's um because I, I'm going to just mention some of the characters' names and we're not going to tell what roles they play in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're correct me if I'm wrong. Because they're sing in the support yeah. group. There's mm. Boris. Yes. I mean, they, they, it's either they're somehow related or they they're, they know each other because it's, they're they're in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and like I said, it, it's about family. It's about support. And when you're talking to me about, you know, you growing up in the neighborhood near that delicatessen, that's mm. the neighborhood you grew up in because your grandfather, mm. you know, in real life, your grandfather, you know, took you to that delicatessen. Yeah. 
this these are things from there. And and like you said, yeah. the neighborhood that you lived in, you know, three in the morning, people are still drinking, they're laughing, they're yeah, you know, and that's the sense that I got mm-hmm. that you know it's it's about um family. Mm-hmm. Um um I love this. I love issue one where, you know, it starts off pretty well. And I'm going to be honest is that I thought it was going to go one way. And then mm, yeah. last page hooks me in. Okay. Then I'm kind of, going, okay. I kind of started in the word. This is going to, go. I read issue two. Yeah. And I'm going, wow. I did not expect it. And then, and then because this story has so much layers. Yeah. It's amazing. And, um, it's it, it's a family drama. It's how people deal with real deep personal trauma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to go anything more into that. Um, yeah, it, it's funny. Uh, so I I um uh, uh there's a uh, podcast here uh, called Pink Buzz. Um, yes. And so yeah, so Joe from Pink Buzz. Uh, so they, they reviewed um the the book as well. And they talked about it, and and Joe Joe kind of said, uh, bottom line, the book is basically about how people deal with loss. Yes. That's all it was. Just, yeah. just simple. It was a simple log line. I wish I thought of it. Right. Uh, but it's just like, it's just funny because like, you know, like I told you, I'm not a comic book guy. I, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't care what happened in such and such issue. I don't, I don't care. You know, I, I'm a visual guy. Um, and then, you know, I almost kind of wrote this book. Uh, God, not like a movie, but it's like, I don't know. I just, I just don't want to write a comic book. No, if yeah. that makes sense you know what i mean yes. i i don't i don't care for i i just i don't know the superhero thing and all that it's just kind of it's kind of boring to me yeah. and uh i just want something grounded grounded but visually yes. stimulating i guess yeah. right uh and then just basically just a, just a sad story i love when movies end on a sad note mm-hmm. you know um yeah because the other thing too the story doesn't flinch away from things mm-hmm. it doesn't it's like it it went place like wow you know it and I can really and the thing is because the interaction between these characters are real and the situation feels real because mm-hmm. some of the stuff that I saw in the book let's be honest is that we probably hear we probably you know it, you know it it probably has happened you know to some yeah people, you know yeah you know or social workers hear of tragic stories of oh my you know yeah it's 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 it, and I, I keep telling people it's just a tragic story yes i don't know other way to put it there's just nothing mm-hmm. there's nothing warm and fuzzy about it I, mm-hmm. I i try to think about anything positive coming out of it but i just i really can't and um you know it's funny i i i showed i posted some photos from issue three mm-hmm. and uh there was uh no sorry issue four it was a it was the opening scene uh where the one character ula is um uh, superimposed above this house yeah and she's, she and she screams you know yeah. whatever she screams anyways so i posted that photo well i got i got a message from like from a family member i haven't talked to in years and and she thought it was her and she was so upset about it right she's upset because of how the person looked right yeah uh and then i'll do what was in the speech bubble as well right you know because <laughs> it was a phrase we heard a lot you know growing up right there's just a lot it was just anyway so so that hit her is it hard it hit really hard right and I, I reply back I'm like sorry this is not about you this is just how i remember things and, and whatnot so but to me it, it was funny it's like in a selfish way you know i kind of felt a little validation you know <laughs> that that this is going to affect yes you know how it comes across right so yes. uh because yeah everybody has their family dynamics right no family's yes. perfect everyone's had moments with their families it's just yes. it is what it is and in that yes. so uh and it's funny i i, I follow the screenwriters uh instagram account uh and they they post like uh quotes from from famous people mm-hmm. and and the one post from tarantino was like some like bottom line is like you know try to write something that's embarrassing mm-hmm. you know personally to yourself and i always have that right you know and so i'm just trying to Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just trying to dig into that more yes. and um and yeah there are there are some there are some spots in there that i know it will embarrass uh, some people mm-hmm. um and then but it's again t- you know same time it's going to relate to some people as well because they have a version of events that are unfolding in front of them right um before i start talking more about the visuals i also want to say too um listeners 
I told Adrian, if you pull out all the, you know, like Tracovia as this, you know, super villain, you pull, you take off his like Hydra vibe costume and everything, and you pull away, pull out, it basically boils down to family drama, family dramas, and how they deal with tragedy, mm-hmm. and it's very real. It hits. It's it's very, it yeah. I it you know. That's yeah, and, and yeah. the bright colors and all that too. You know, it's it it goes back to uh, it really goes back to my furniture days where it's like yes. the furniture the furniture I designed was so simple, so rigid, yes. just a block. But it's like you paint it red, and then all of a sudden people like it. You know what I mean? So I, I it basically just me hiding. <laughs> it's it's basically taking my inferior line work and hiding it behind color, right? <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> it just is. It is what it is. I understand it. I'll, you know. You know, I mean, it does get better. If you look at issue one and issue five, mm-hmm. there's, I, I feel there is a, is a progression, but, but funny note though. Uh, so about that. So uh, kind of the time, I think just for, at the time when I signed for Scout, uh, there's a website called Comical Opinions um, and they, mm-hmm. they do reviews. And so he, uh, he actually did a review for Tracovia one, which is cool, right? Because like I said, it was still the, the self-published version. And so, uh, and, and it's funny, if you go through his site, you know, he, uh, he's a very honest reviewer, you know, mm-hmm. he doesn't any code all that. So, uh, anyway, so seven out of 10 uh, at the review, I was like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so I, I read it, but he made some good points, right? He kind of had comments about, you know, the line work and all that, mm-hmm. which I understand. Love the colors. Yes. And mm-hmm. then he made a comment about, uh, uh, the one character toy cough, yes. uh, who's probably sidekick. Uh, so in, in the self-published version, I kind of sort of like, so it costs there and he's not there. And then he shows up later. It was just this weird kind of whatever. And so he made a comment about that. I'm like, oh shit. And so basically what I ended up doing, I actually end up making two bonus pages of story for the scout version. Oh. So if you ever get if you ever get the self-published version, mm-hmm. it's missing two pages, right? And and then Toykov has less of a presence where in, in issue one, he's got more of a presence. Yes. Yeah. Which 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 helps give you a bit of connection to him. And mm-hmm. then it makes events later on feel a little more heavier because you you remember this character and then yes. now you see what transpires with said character uh later on so anyway so i i i i'm always grateful to uh to gabe at comical mm-hmm. opinions just for being very honest and because he really helped uh yeah he really helped me clean that up without him saying clean it up you know mm-hmm. so, yeah yeah um and also um the art style, the colors are very dynamic. They're very vibrant. I love the art because it incorporates a lot of different art styles, mm-hmm. especially when Tracovi walks into the delicatessen and he starts he want, he starts trying to order a sandwich. And I love the background on the wall. You know, you see kind of like markings on the wall, but then you see like there's um um have you seen him poster? And it's almost and, and like you mentioned, yeah. it's like a collage because it's 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 not a it's not part of it, it's like a collage of artworks that you did in the panel you know mm-hmm. i'm not an artist i don't know how to just dis- yeah sort of- no and that that's and that's that that's the actual poster that was used uh for an snfu campaign and so uh that's that's the lead singer chai pig uh and so i just kind of snuck it in there um yeah yeah that again too that's just a little like kind of nod to like my old collage days right yeah. so i just kind of snuck uh snuck it in there but the other thing but also, but I, but what you've done in the other issues, it's, it's very dynamic. I love because there's some where you can see like graffiti written in, in like, um, you, you have like graffiti partially written on a panel, or mm-hmm. and sometimes you can, I could try to try to really read what's going, read it. Yeah, it almost yeah. like foreshadows something in the next page or something. Yes. There's a lot of different things. So there's like, uh, it's like uh, some of that that scribble is additional dialogue. Some of it is like uh, revealing plot points. Some of it is thought bubbles. Uh, some of it is just song lyrics from whatever I've been listening to yes. at the moment, right? So um, yeah, it's just however you want to interpret it. Stuff's in there. I, I know I, I've had friends who like, you know, they 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 kind of sent screen captures. They're like, I think this is what this means, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, which is cool, right? So, but yes. again, too, it's just it's just. A lot of it was mostly for aesthetic, um, uh-huh. you know, because like I just again to it's just hiding. Behind, it's just hiding. That's me hiding in plain yeah. view, mm-hmm. because like I said, I was just so uh, I, I admire good line work. 
you know, from proper artists, right? So it's just me kind of just sort of like, you know, ooh, look at this instead, right? Kind of thing, <laughs> right? So, uh, but it's become a style, right? It's become comfortable, right? Like mm -hmm. this, I'm starting a new book with with uh, with less known comics, and I'm still I'm just following that train. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna be, you know, it's just it's 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 my thing. It, you know, so. Before I start moving on to more questions, one thing I love is your artwork is very dynamic. You do all the collages. In issue two, when we, I think when I see Wendy, there are some scenes with Wendy. What I love about it is you made it small and quiet. We just focus on Wendy's face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love it because it's like, you know, the first issue is wild. All these things are going on. Mm -hmm. Part of issue two. And then, and then I love it how you just bring it into Wendy and you just focus on her. And it's just all the quietness. That's really. Yeah. Because it's a sad reflective moment, right? You know, like it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a sad moment for her. Um, you know, with obviously what she reveals, uh, yes. partially reveals at the, at that time. So yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it, yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Um, I'm going to ask who is Sean Romanek? Oh, Romanek? Sean yeah, Romanek's my so... brother. Yeah. So Sean Romanek's my brother. Um, so I, I had this one scene where it's like, uh, so Tracovi's on top of the bus, yes. uh, page two and three. And he's basically, you know, he's just, he's squatting on this bus that's halfway. And he's just like, I wanted to say something to these kids, right? Just like yes. something. And so I just, I, on Facebook, I just put it out there. I'm like, Hey, whoever comes up with the line, I will credit you right on that page. Mm -hmm. So my brother, <laughs> my brother throws in that line, you know? Uh, I like. Well, I was like, I, I, I'm sorry to say, it's like I, I hope you cunts have permission slips. <laughs> I just like, I just like, oh my dear lord, it was like, it was so perfect, and so I just, yeah, it's just so that was his contribution, and to me, it was just a major contribution because it just kind of, it was so fitting uh, for that scene, and I, 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 yeah, I love him for that. Oh, oh but I love it because it's like you have one of those like those little, um, you know, in those old comics, you would have the little, um yellow box in the bottom like translated from you know him speaking so cold yeah man, right? <laughs> yeah yeah i know and then and that was the other thing that was the other thing, tricky part too is like you know because he switches from you know speaking slovenian right which i i, I noted in some spots and you know the parentheses and all that yeah. whatever and then he goes to english right so i made sure that in slovenian it was it sounded like fluent english and then broken english mm -hmm. when he was talking english so yes. you know i don't know, I, I tried so no but it's good it's, i love it um before I continue on, um, Olivia Kolarik, layout editor. Who... Yeah, my daughter. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. So she's in university right now. And um, and yeah, so she basically it's like, so yeah, she helped, uh, uh, you know, help me with my compositions and, uh, you know, some color choices and that basically the layouts, right? Like I would do a page and she'd be like, well, this should be bigger, the small, do the, you yes. know. Whatever. So yeah. So she um and I, I'm using her on on the new book as well. And so she's just well, it's it's handy because she's in the same house, right? So it's like yes. come on over and and whatever. Um, but yeah, she's just got a great editor, uh, mm -hmm. editor mentality. And uh, and she's not she's not very polite about it. Uh, she's very you know, mm -hmm. you know, she's 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 blunt. Uh, mm -hmm. which is which is exactly what I need. So and I trust her and I trust her and um, yeah. All right, my final, um, before I start moving on, start wrapping things up, you mentioned that you're working on your next comic book. Uh, I'm sorry, I know you mentioned, you want to mention it again right now? Yeah, so uh, the book is called The Sitter, mm -hmm. uh, and it's with Lesser Known Comics, uh, mm -hmm. who's like an indie label out of LA. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm well into drawing it right now, and we are shooting uh, for next April uh, for the Kickstarter. Oh, and okay. Then, and, then, and then we'll, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, cool. All right, I'm going to start going to fun. Actually, yeah, start going to some fun. I'm slowly wrapping things up. Okay. Store signing or convention appearance this summer or fall? Okay, so all I got right now is just uh, because I don't have anything. I don't have anything physical. I don't have any drawings. I don't have any books. Yes, nothing yeah. right now. <laughs> right. But so uh, the local shop here, Comic Fever, who mm -hmm. actually is shows up in issue three uh as one of the settings um so they're going to be doing a book signing uh on the july 29th 
Oh, okay. Uh, which is like three days after the book, whatever. So they ordered like a hundred copies, and so they're they sent it out to their mailing list and all that. And um, so yeah, so that's that's my only event at the moment. And then uh, I might have a, a, a an issue two signing at at another shop here in town. So that's pretty cool. Okay, have you and your family been to Hawaii? God, oh, I want to so bad. Uh -huh. Um, it is it is it is. Uh, who doesn't want to go to Hawaii, right? <laughs> like, like who on earth does not want to go to Hawaii? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, talk to me in, in January when it's like minus 30 and we got, you know, five feet of snow, then I'll, I'll give you a more colorful answer. So <laughs> hell yeah. I, I, I just, it's, it's, it will happen one day. Hey, maybe I'll do a con down there. I don't know. We'll see. So we have, con we have two, well, we're slowly starting back up the convention. So mm -hmm. we have a uh, comic con Honolulu in August. Yeah, and amazing Comic Con. I think they're coming back next year in 2024, probably in the springtime. But yeah. Okay. Hey, I, honestly, for me, like, I just want to go to conventions that are in nice places. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I just, yeah, yeah, we get, I, I just get tired of the snow, right? Yeah. So. All right. Any closing words to our listeners? Ah, uh, please read the book. Yes. Like, for the love of Almighty, just read the book. Get just 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 give it a shot mm -hmm. um you know bear with me um because like i said it, it's just gonna it's gonna go where you just don't expect it to go and then once you understand where it goes you're part of it and i i'm, I'm such a firm believer in this book um you know uh i just yeah please just just read it adrian mahalo thank you and thank you very much for your time thank, thank you, you. Oh, thank you very much for contacting us and giving us advanced reading copies. Um, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to interview you. I wish you all the success with your series, um, Tracovi. If you are a new comic book fan or a lifelong comic book fan, please check out Tracovi from Scout Comics. The first issue comes out on July 26th. Um, Adrian, I'm sorry, I'm going to make a note here um, mm -hmm. for some of our, you know, for some readers, you know, please note that, you know, there is strong language throughout the series. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Yes, don't read this to your kids. Do not give this oh, to your yeah. kids. <laughs> yeah, this is not a this is not a bedtime story. Dad, for, Dad what's that yeah. word? What? <laughs> <laughs> but also, too, the other thing too is that um, it deals with um, very real and dark um subject matter. It mm -hmm. does, and this is not just this is not just generic super villainy um crimes it, it it it's a you know as we talked about it's a family drama they deal with tragedy and loss i've already read the five issues as of now it's going to be you know you know at least one of my top picks for 2023 and again the reasons i'm not going to give spoils simply it's visually stunning with a very strong story about family dynamics and again how does one deal with trauma? Actually, how how do how how does this family and friends, the support group, you know, deal with trauma in their life? So, like I said, you know, as Adrian said, you know, when you pick up issue one, you know, please you just just stick with it, and because this is a very good series, it really is. I want to thank Drew, thank the you. host of Comics for Fun and Profit. You know, Drew, thank you very much for putting this episode together. Thank you very much for all your hard work behind the scenes. And if you are a new listener, please check out new episodes of Comics for Fun and Profit that comes out every Saturday. And I want to thank you, the listeners. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening to this episode. Until next time, guys. Aloha. Aloha. The good folks at Comics for Fun and Profit have been doing two episodes a week um, for quite some time now and it's all thanks to first of all jason and second of all our patrons who allow us to add the space on our server broadcast more store more share more with you listeners i'm envious of those of you who have unlimited storage and media server capabilities we we pay for ours here at at the c4 fap it ain't cheap we thank you so much for those of you who go to patreon.com slash comics fun profit and contribute at any level to say thanks, to say I want to be a part of your Slack channel, 
conversations. I want to get exclusives. I want to get early access. I want to get ad free access. I want to get swag. I want to get some free stuff. Whatever your reasoning is, we appreciate it at any level because it does make a difference. So from the bottom of Kyle and I and Jason's heart, thank you for contributing.